Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I hope everyone had a wonderful 4th of July holiday. God bless America. I'm Joe Gallimore, Director of Investment Management with Arch Bridge Advisors, here to bring you our latest installment of Cup of Joe for the month of June. Um, Friday, June 30th, closed out the month, the quarter, and the first half of 2023. Uh, and I got to say, I love it when the end of a time period falls on a Friday. It just makes my left side brain feel good. Um, well, June was a good one for equities. Uh, the S&P 500 rose another 6.6%. Mid caps and small caps were up over 8%. Real estate stocks came off the floor and rose about 5% during the month. Um, and bonds retracted, not a lot, but about minus 0.4%. So the sentiment was obviously risk on, and this was evidenced by stocks and bonds moving in opposite directions during the month of June. Now, the market is floating to a precarious level. And I use the word precarious because the index valuation and the year-to-date returns for the S&P 500, uh, they seem a little overly optimistic given the direction of the underlying data. Um, to paraphrase something I read on Yahoo Finance earlier this week, the market levels have become dislocated from the trend of the economic data. Now, indeed, many economists are saying that um, despite the persistently good GDP numbers and consumer spending reports, that industrial activity is slowing down and the risk of recession has actually risen over the past two quarters. Now, the market is on pace to have an annual return of over 33% for the year of 2023. And this has only happened six times since 1928. Uh, when looking at the price return of the S&P 500. So a closer look at this very strong performance shows us that it's actually being propped up by only a handful of names. And who are they? You might ask, well, you guessed it. Apple, Google, Microsoft, and the like. It's mega cap US tech stocks. Um, and you can throw NVIDIA in there now. They're on track to be uh, become the next trillion dollar company and they are just killing it this year. So I know our advisors have spoken with many of you clients about concentration at the top of the index. Um, and to throw a few stats out, the top 10 stocks in the S&P 500 right now comprise about 31.7% of the index by market cap. Now that's according to JP Morgan. This is up from around 20% only just five years ago. Six of those top 10 names are tech stocks. Um, and seven, if you want to count Amazon. So many investment strategists think that the second half of 2023 will be marked by increased volatility and potentially a significant price correction from the levels they are now. Now, the first reason to expect this volatility, they say, is because that index concentration that we just talked about, that can be a double-edged sword. Uh, stellar tech performance has certainly boosted the market so far this year. But if there's a sell-off in only a few of those names, uh, they can pull the market down with it. Now, second, messaging from the Fed, uh, even just last week, suggests that they may not be done raising interest rates just yet. Uh, it all depends on the data that comes in. Now, rising interest rates is not only typically a headwind for strong stock returns, but rising interest rates may also spark volatility from unforeseen consequences. Uh, you may have heard it said that the Fed is gonna break something. Uh, and if you need a not so pleasant reminder of this, just see that little regional banking crisis we had a few short months ago. Um, but at the most basic level, the most fundamental reason to keep a sober expectation for the second half of this year is because that the market is on a white hot pace and the economy and corporate profits are simply not keeping up with it. Right now, the market is acting very much like a voting machine, uh, or actually a wishing well might be a better analogy. Um, it's acting like those versus being a weighing machine, which is what um, prudent professional investors consider it to be. So um, right now might be a good time to be mindful of a few behavioral investing lessons uh, that we've all been taught. The first is to moderate your expectation and manage your emotions. Don't let the market give you FOMO 
and bait you into stepping out on the risk spectrum at exactly the wrong time. Um, and to help you with managing those emotions, I'll just throw out a quick reminder that back in May, here at Argent Bridge, we reallocated some of our equity risk within our models to try and hedge out some of that downside that, that may be coming in the second half of this year or even beyond. Um, and we've also harvested uh, cash for those of you who are taking regular cash distributions out of your portfolio. So um, that is the take from the first half of 2023. Um, we hope you're enjoying these Cup of Joes. And if they spark any questions uh, about what we talk about or anything else investment related or financial planning related, please reach out to us. You can reach out to me or any advisors here on the team. Thank you very much.